good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the choir room here at Christ Church United Methodist in downtown Charleston, West Virginia. My name is David Donathan, and I'm the minister of music here at the church. And today I want to talk about one of my all time favorite hymns that is entitled Holy, Holy, Holy. Now, this Sunday in the life of the church universal, people all around the world are going to be celebrating what is called Trinity Sunday. It's the day after Pentecost, and it's a Sunday where we focus our attention on the idea of the Trinity, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this particular hymn, Holy, 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 was written specifically for Trinity Sunday. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of theological discussion around the Trinity because even seasoned theologians sometimes have a hard time portraying and discussing what the Holy Trinity is. So what I'm going to do today is talk about this hymn specifically and how it relates to this coming Sunday. It has a pretty significant history. The text to this hymn was written in 1826 by an Anglican priest by the name of Reginald Heber. Now he was an award-winning poet, was a priest in the Church of England, and was eventually elected to be a bishop in India, specifically the Bishop of Calcutta. But unfortunately, Reginald only lived 43 years. But during his 43 years, he was extremely influential in bringing hymn singing back into the Anglican church. During this time, there was a lot of music. This was the Methodist, the big uh, growing season of the Methodist movement in England. And there was not hymn singing allowed in the church at the, that particular time. So Reginald uh, took on the task of writing hymns for every Sunday of the year. And this particular hymn was one that he wrote in 1826 that was specifically for Trinity Sunday. And a lot of times his hymns would be sung after the sermon, but before the Apostles' Creed. So the song would be sung at that point in the service at that time. So he wrote this particular text uh, based on Revelation 4 verses 8 through 11. And here again, Revelation, it can be an extremely difficult and an extremely hard to understand book of the Bible, but you'll hear the text here in just a minute. And it starts off from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, you are worthy, our Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So the text to Holy, Holy, Holy came from this book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. So as I mentioned, Reginald Heber, an Anglican uh, priest, wrote this hymn for Trinity Sunday. Now, Trinity Sunday, as I mentioned, is this coming Sunday, and so we are going to be singing this particular hymn in worship. It's one of my favorites. But you really can't sing the hymn without the music. So the tune to Holy, Holy, Holy was written by a gentleman by the name of John Dykes, who was also an Anglican church musician. And it's the name of the tune that goes with Holy, Holy, Holy is called Nicaea. Now, this is a reference to the Council of Nicaea called by Constantine I as an effort to come to a consensus of what all the religious holidays and the religious meanings would be. And it was at this Council of Nicaea that that group of bishops 
created the doctrine, as we say, of the Holy Trinity. And so since the text is about the Holy Trinity, John Dykes wrote the tune and named it Nicaea in honor of the Council of Nicaea that created the doctrine of the Trinity. So you with me so far? So what's interesting about this hymn is the way that it's written, okay? Uh, if you know the tune, uh, which I played a little earlier, it was a piano arrangement by uh, the contemporary pianist Jim Brickman, but the traditional hymn starts like this. Okay, so John Dykes wrote this as a reference to the Trinity because the first two notes in music is called a triad, one, two, three. The next two notes are a triad, one, two, three. So it's a reference to the Holy Trinity just in the way that he wrote the opening lines of the hymn, which I think is fantastic. Now this particular hymn is one of the most beloved hymns from this era. It's, it's touted as being one of the best or the most well-written hymns. Um, it's singable, it lies within the perfect range, uh, it's easy to remember. It's just hailed as one of the greatest hymn tunes of this particular time. So um, all of this together, the text by Reginald Heber, who was groundbreaking at the time in England, of trying to get hymns back into the church, and then John Dykes writing a tune that specifically even focuses on the Trinity because just the way the notes are written in a triad form brings all of this together when we sing the hymn as a congregation. I think that's pretty fascinating to me because not a lot of composers um, take that kind of thing into consideration or aren't necessarily inspired by things like that. Some are, of course, but this hymn was written in 1861 to go with this text and it has since become a hymn that is known all over the world. And churches all across the world will be singing this hymn this Sunday. So it's kind of cool that we will join our voices with millions of people around the world in singing this hymn to the Trinity. So what I thought I would do real quick is read the text to this hymn. Many of you may know it, but let me read the text as it goes with this music. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 and there again he says holy three times at the beginning of each verse as a reference to the Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. We heard that in the reference or the reading from Revelation. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which wert and art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. So there are th sets of three all the way through this particular hymn, and every set of three is a reference to the Trinity. The music is written in a triadic form, and that's a reference to the Trinity. The text is a reference to the Trinity. Everything in this hymn is a reference to the Trinity, and that's what we will be celebrating this coming Sunday, the work of God the Father, the work of God the Son, and the work of God the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Now, as I mentioned, the piece that I played at the beginning, an arrangement of this hymn was by uh, the cont contemporary pianist Jim Brickman. What I'm going to do now is play through this hymn and then I'm going to sing the first verse. And as you listen to this, listen for the triad in the melody that is a reference to the Trinity.
So this Sunday in worship, we will be talking about the Trinity, the power of the Trinity. And Jay will be preaching on a little bit about what it means when we claim the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining with me today. Let's close with a word of prayer. Loving and gracious God, you are ever present in our lives, and we thank you for the presence that we feel in our hearts and in our minds. We know that through the love of God, the power of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that we can't do in your name. So as we prepare to celebrate the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit this coming Sunday, Help us to know the power and strength that each one can give. And as we sing this hymn, help us to feel your presence through the text and through the music. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining with me today. I hope you learned a little something about this particular tune. And it's something that you'll carry with you in the days ahead as we prepare for this coming Sunday. I hope all of you have a blessed week, and I'll see you the next time.